Hello, hello, hello. My name is Robert. I am the Recovery Guy, and you have entered into The Fix. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Robert. I am the Recovery Guy. Thank you so much for joining this podcast today. It is always a good day when I can be in front of this microphone and share my experience, strength, and hope with you. Uh, Last week was a fantastic week. My friend Tess picked up her four-year chip, and what a miracle she is. I heard from another friend of mine named Stephanie, and she is just growing in leaps and bounds in her personal recovery because we are adhering to recovery principles, right? That's the difference between yesterday and today. Yesterday, I was living in a fantasy in the insanity of my addiction, thinking that somehow my life was going to get better or at least stop going downhill, but I was continuing to do everything I was doing that made it a train wreck in the first place. I need to be restored from that insanity and begin to do new things that develop and create and promote a health and a wellness from the inside out in the four areas of life, the mental, the emotional, the physical, and the spiritual. Without addressing these four things, I will never get into alignment. I will be like a vehicle that you always have to keep tight grip on the steering wheel. Otherwise, you will run off the road. And that is, a, to me, a great metaphor for how we ought, how I, let me own it, how I ought to conduct my recovered life. Last week, I was in a meeting, a couple meetings, one up in Bountiful, a great afternoon meeting. And then the following day, I went to um, Salt Lake Alano Club in Murray, Utah, And it was, I think there were seven or eight people there within their first 30 days. There was one person there with, it was their fifth day of personal recovery. And I remember those days. I remember crying like this person was crying. I remember realizing it was the last house on the block. And if this didn't work, I just may have to die. And and it caused such great stress and fear in me that through that fear, through that emotion, through that anxiety, I stayed long enough because of the fellowship, because of what you said to me, how you cared about me, how you embraced me, how you taught me that no matter what you learned about me, you were going to ask me to come back because coming back was the answer for you as it was for me coming back for the fellowship, coming back for the camaraderie, coming back for that oneness, that closeness that only the rooms of recovery can bring. I stayed long enough for the plan of recovery, the program of recovery to begin to take seed and grow in my personal life. And as I shared with these individuals, all they need to do right now is don't drink and come back. Even if you drink or use, still come back. But wherever possible, don't drink, don't use, and come back. And if you can do that long enough and understand our powerlessness, then we are ready to take certain steps. I have a great friend, a new friend of mine. And if you're on TikTok, I want you to follow her. We may not agree on everything, but what we agree on is a healthy exchange of ideas and thoughts. So write this down, jot this down. I'll even actually put it in the notes at I dot the letter I am a M dot Tenmara, T E N M A R A. So at I dot am dot Tenmara, and that's on TikTok. Follow this person and And again, you may not agree 100%, 100% of the time, but that's not important. I think the more I get to know this person, the more I will find we do agree on more than what we would disagree on. And sometimes it may be just semantics. It may be just words or how we present something. But at the end of the day, 
she is clean and sober and I am clean and sober. A great exchange we got into the other day and she had made a, a comment uh, or a position as far as there is no silver bullet. And, and I know what she's saying, but you know what, folks? I think there is a silver bullet. I really do. Uh, and, and I'm going to talk about that in today's podcast. So today's podcast is the silver bullet. When it comes to personal recovery, I believe doing certain things will gain me certain results, right? It's kind of like garbage in, garbage out. A friend of mine, Steve, years ago said, what's down in the well comes up in the bucket. It says that so a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Gandhi said, you cannot do wrong in one department of life while attempting to do right in another department. Life is one indivisible whole, right? You can't mix good and evil because one is going to prevail. So as long as we continue to do the things that promote wellness, we will be well. It's only when I stop doing those things. Uh, in my addictive life, I did not live this way. I believed that I could continue to act in a negative and contrary way and my life would get better. And if not get better, it certainly wouldn't get worse. My restoration to sanity, sanity was my, my, my mental, my emotional, uh, my spiritual and physical transformation from that mindset. I needed to learn how to think differently and based on that thinking, that processing, I would in turn live differently, right? There's an adage that says you can't live your way into better thinking, but you can think your way into better living. You know, that, that that's an argument for another podcast. But today, I know what to expect when I do certain things. I know what to expect if I behave negatively and, and, and I know what to expect when I behave positively, right? Water always seeks its own level. That is a scientific uh, theory and fact based on gravity, right? Um, it's like, it's like laying a pan in a shower. Do you know why water drains to the center of the drain in a shower? We may not be able to see it exactly. We can maybe feel it with our feet, but, but, it, but, but the, but it's designed to drain that way ever so slightly. Even when I built my gazebo in my patio, I constructed my pillars because here in Utah, we get snow and rain, obviously. And, and I went regular height on the end, then two inches down from the other, and then the, the third post out another two inches. So between the, 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 the end and, and the, and the other end, there was a four inch difference. You may not be able to see it exactly because it gradually slopes over 17 feet, but it's there and it's there by design for things to drain uh, in, in a particular direction so things don't get too heavy and, and, and collapse my roof. You know, there's a certain reason we do certain things based on intellectual, emotional, physical, and spiritual health. My silver bullet, Let's get back. Let me get back to the podcast. My silver bullet is the answer to all my concerns. I have, and here it is. I have never known a person actively involved in recovery to relapse. I've, I've never known it. And I've been at this 36 years. It'll be 36 years in April. I've been in the program for over 36 years, but clean and sober wise will be 36 years, April 25th. When I came back from my relapse back on um, April 25th of 1986, and I began to realize how destructive I was, I went to my sponsor, Jack, and I was very concerned. I was very afraid because as my friend Pete the Greek would tell me, I was learning how to do step one to perfection. By the way, if you're a 12 step or any other program that you're involved with, the most important step that we must do to perfection is where we admit our powerlessness and our unmanageability. 
I can make mistakes in the other steps. And as long as I correct them over time, I'll be okay. But the minute I make a mistake in step one, I'm doomed. So that is the one step I must do to perfection. The minute I think I can safely do a drink or a drug, or I can have one or two, or I can go gamble $50 and don't think that the $100 is in danger, right? Or my house or my car or my marriage, what have you. Um, Once I believe that window is open, then I will fail. So a silver bullet is, is, and I believe this with everything about me, a silver bullet is service. My sponsor, Jack, told me, he said, Bob, I've never known a person relapse who was actively involved in service. And guess what? Neither have I. I've known a lot of people who have relapsed along the way. As a coach, I work a lot in relapse prevention. And I deal with people on finding out where you got off track I have never met a person who did not get off track who has relapsed. Now, there is a very small exception, right? Here it is, in my opinion. When a sudden, tragic, and traumatic experience occurs in your life, that could open up an emotional window to relapse. But that is the extreme exception, not the rule. And here's why I tell you. When I was two and a half years, almost two and a half years sober, it was August 1st of 1988. I got sober in April of 1986 was my my final sobriety date thank God. My relationship with my dad had been restored to where we were finally the friends I had always wanted us to be. I drove from Southern California where I was managing a Black Angus restaurant, and you may have heard this story before, and I drove to Las Vegas where my mom and dad were living. I knocked on my dad's door, hoping to hang out with him. We were going to spend a week together playing cribbage and pinochle with my mom and just sort of hanging out, being friends, my dad and me. And I knocked on his door and nobody answered. To make a long story short, my dad died that day. He laid down to take a nap, waiting for me to get there. And he had a massive coronary in his sleep. And instead of spending a week with my dad, I buried my dad. I could have relapsed because it was a traumatic experience. And I'm not casting judgment on people who have relapsed in a like situation. Every person has to decide for themselves. However, I had built in a support network around me. That's what I was trained to do, to have a sponsor, to go to meetings, to read my recovery material, to understand a relationship with God as I understood God, And I called up my sponsor, Jack. I said, Jack, who was friends with my dad as well. He lived in Las Vegas. My dad just died. What do I do? He said, I'll be right over. Jack was one of my silver bullets. You know, we don't just have one bullet, you know, with my handguns, you know, on some handguns, I have five rounds. Some are six rounds. Some who are semi-automatic, I have seven or eight rounds in the magazine but I have each one of those is a bullet. Each one of those is a silver bullet designed to protect me through the normal course of living. And that's what recovery does. Recovery is my silver bullet. There is a way out on which we can absolutely agree. I never intend and never have to go back to that way of living and neither do you. There is a silver bullet. And so that week, once again, instead of spending time with my dad, I buried my dad and I went to God and I said, God, if you get me through this, if you carry me through this situation of emotion, of loss, of despair, of discouragement, of disillusionment, why me, God? Why at this time do you have to take my dad 
who I'm learning to be friends with, understanding our background. Why do you have to take him in this moment? I said, no, God, if you carry me through this time, I will realize that there is never a reason, there will never be a reason for me to drink or use again. God was my silver bullet in that moment. Remember, our real reliance is always upon God. And in that moment, instead of my reliance being on a drink or a drug or the the, the blackjack table or a, a porn site or a strip joint or eating three pizzas and then throwing up, right? Because that's who I was in my addiction. I was able to be carried through that moment was my silver bullet. I know that that week I went on a 12-step call. That's when you go help an alcoholic, someone who's suffering, who calls Alcoholics Anonymous Central Office to get help. So that week, when my dad died, suddenly, on the first day of my vacation with him, I called my sponsor, I worked the steps, I prayed to God, I went to a meeting, and I helped somebody else. Those are silver bullets. It says in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. I'm quoting from how it works in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Again, rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly, good word there, thoroughly followed our path. It goes on to say, those who do not recover who do not take advantage of the silver bullet are people who cannot or will not completely give themselves to this simple program. Not complicated, but simple program. Then it goes on to say, there are those too who suffer from grave emotional and mental disorders, but many of them do recover if they have the capacity to be honest. Honesty is another silver bullet, and we'll discuss that a little bit later. It says in the forward to the first edition, we wrote this book, I'm paraphrasing here, to show you precisely how we have recovered. So the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, another 12 steps, the 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 Quran, right, whatever Whatever book you use as your path to recovery, the Bible, the Torah, whatever you use as your journey, as your path, that was written precisely for you to follow the path of enlightenment, of wellness. That is your silver bullet. Again, Jack told me, he has never known a person to relapse who was involved in service, helping another person. If you look at any of the monotheistic religions of the world, the Buddhist network, a naturalist approach, certainly 12-step programs, AAOA, NAGASA, you name it, everything revolves around me finding a message, carrying that message to someone else. As you've heard me discuss the steps, it's me God and others. Solve, solve. That was one of my podcasts a couple of weeks ago. Solving for me, God and others. Those are silver bullets. If I can understand me and why I got there in the first place will help expose my need for God. And as a result of my need for God, God tells us to go carry this message to other people. Again, what we really have is a daily reprieve contingent on the maintenance of our spiritual condition. My spiritual condition is a silver bullet. And again, with Tenmar and me, we, it may be semantics, but I believe in silver bullets. If you told me if I did everything you asked me to do, I still could relapse. I still could die. I still could walk out of my family again. I could still have a life of mediocrity. I probably wouldn't have done it. But you told me, Robert, do these things. And we can all but guarantee you that over time, your life will get better. If you, if you listen to my podcast last week on the promises, it says, are these extravagant promises 
we think not. They're being fulfilled among us. Then it says, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly, but they will always, they will always materialize if we work for them. Doing the work is a silver bullet. There's so many silver bullets out there to load our our recovery weapon with that we can withstand anything, anytime, anyone. But that is one of the reasons we need to surround ourselves with people who think that way. I needed to, and I still to this day, I surround myself with people who walk that same path, who, who believe the same types of things, maybe not in the same way exactly, but the same types of things to gain the same results. Once again, in my life, I have done two things to perfection. I have not drank or used since April 24th of 1986. April 25th, 1986 is my first day of sobriety. I have not drank since I woke up that morning. And I have followed a proven, proven path of recovery. A proven path of recovery. This has been the path for countless others I've met along the way. The silver bullet path has not been easy, but it has been 100% effective. I don't need it to be easy, but I do need it to be simple. And that's why there are those too who suffer from grave emotional and mental disorders, but many of them do recover if they have the capacity to be honest. You know, I used to be involved in sales years ago, and one of the great sales teachers, Tom Hopkins, said that sales is the lowest paying easy work or the highest paying hard work. And that's just like recovery. Sales is not difficult. Sales is not easy, but it is simple. And if you understand the sales process, there's a great deal of simplicity in understanding from, from the meet and greet to the close and everything that happens in between. Recovery is the exact same way. Let me share with you six things. And these are simple things. They're foundational things. Folks, this is the silver bullet. And let me say, let me say, and, and you've heard about my five, right? Remember old T-Mobile, who's in your five, right? These are people you could call or message and it wouldn't go against your buckets of, of minutes or, or text or your data. There is Slow Will, my sponsor, 42 years. Buddy C, going on 45 years. Scott Shields, 37 years. Steve M., It'll be 37 years in September of this year. And Fast Eddie P, I think Fast, I think Eddie's coming up on 38 years. These five men, and then there's my sponsor, Jack, who passed away. Um, he would have 47 years. He passed away three years ago. Texas Mike, Abe the Plumber, Doc Irv. Pete the Greek is still alive with 45, 46 years. Russian Ted, I don't know if he's living or dead. Every one of these people, everyone who's been instrumental in my recovered life either died sober or still is sober. The five that I listed have are coming up on 200 years of personal recovery. Just five people. And I have coming up on 36 years. Is there a silver bullet? Yes, there is. Is it sometimes difficult to bite down on? Yes, it is. But just because something is, is challenging doesn't mean it's impossible. The word rarely, it means barely. It means hardly. It means almost never. It means extremely. It means hardly ever. It means on rare occasions. It means once in a while. Now, again, does it mean 100%? No, but but I can have confidence. If, if, if you ask me to believe either way, if you say, Robert, 
Is it more productive for you to believe this will never happen providing you do these things? It's like my friend Tom Bennett, who was my first counselor when I went into detox back in 1986, February 9th. Tom told me, Robert, it's absolutely physiologically, scientifically impossible for you to get drunk or high if you don't drink or use. I could understand that. I will never get drunk or high providing I don't drink or use. Doesn't that make sense to you? That is even beyond rarely. That is never. Now, what do I have to do to make that happen, right? What do I have to do? How do I have to act? Where do I have to go? Who do I have to incorporate in my life for that to never occur, to drink or to use? That is the silver bullet. That is the key. Here are three things that we all must do and how we do them. Are you ready? These will be in the notes. And again, this isn't rocket science for if it was, I wouldn't have figured it out. Here are the things. You've heard them before. You're going to hear them again because repetition is the mother of learning. Number one, we clean house. We clean house. We do that in steps of the program of recovery. We trust God. It is better to trust infinite God rather than finite self. I love, if you're not familiar with the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, in chapter five, after it says the steps, it says three pertinent ideas. A, we were alcoholic and we could not manage our own lives. B, that probably no human power could have relieved our alcoholism. And C, that God could and would if he were sought. It wasn't a matter of if God could or not, because God always does. We are the common denominator. I am the common denominator. I've heard this adage before, um, and my dear friend Damon Willis drove this into me back in the early uh, 2000s, 2005, 2006. He said, whether you say you can or you can't, you are correct. So I trust God as he may express himself in our group conscious. And the third thing I do is I work with others. I help clean up my life. I find a necessary power to conduct my life according to the will of God. And then I go help others, which is the will of God. If you look, once again, referring back to the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, where what we really have is a daily reprieve contingent on the maintenance of our spiritual condition. Right after that, the next sentence is, what I have to do every day is God's vision for me, and then I need to go carry that out. So if we take that to the steps of recovery and we understand step 10, I clean house. Step 11, I trust God. And step 12, I work with others. It is only through the wisdom and the power and the direction of God that I then, having had that spiritual awakening, a silver bullet is spiritual awakening. I tried to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice. So I'm ongoing. I'm working. Another silver bullet. Continue to work the program. It is a silver bullet. As long as I keep taking my therapy, my medicine, I stay emotionally balanced. As a co-occurring disorder counselor years ago, I understand the importance of, of even psychotic people, people with, um, uh, with bipolar, people with multiple personalities. As long as they take their medication subscribed, prescribed by, by the psychiatrist, on-site psychiatrist, then we could help them understand once they were balanced chemically. Even these people found recovery. I clean house. I trust God. I then work with other people carrying this message of recovery, of wellness. It is a silver bullet. I, to this day, I've never known, and whether it's Chaz or Tess or Angie or Wendy or Debbie or Scott, you name it. I know countless people in my life. Susie, who writes a blog, by the way, this Thursday will be be Susie's blog on step nine. All of these people are achieving recovery. Before me, with me, and after me, we all follow 
a like path to wellness. How do we do that? How do we clean house, trust God and work with others? I can't. He can. I think I'll let him. It's honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. I told you this was going to be simple. If it were complicated, I could not have achieved it. I'm honest with myself. Honesty, self-disclosure, disclosure when it's two o'clock in the morning and the lights are out and nobody else is there. What is the truth about Robert Parton? I must get down to who I was, what I did. Get through the fear of why I drank. In the doctor's opinion, it says men and women drink essentially because they like the effect produced by alcohol. Why do I need to be medicated? As Father Martin would say, it's a natural human response to seek relief from that which is uncomfortable. I had to find out what I was uncomfortable with and find another way through it rather than medicating about it. Then I need to be open-minded. You you may have heard the quote that I mentioned the other day. Everyone wants to learn, but no one wants to be taught. Before I can say, teach me, I need to say, I don't know, or I'm not sure. Help me understand. I need to be open-minded. I need to set aside my prejudicial, my prejudgment thinking long enough for you to tell me what you have done. I remember early on in recovery, how people would laugh at me in recovery because I said some crazy things. But until I learned to say, I don't know, I never cared about what you knew. And then, of course, number three is willing. I need to be willing to turn my will in my life over to the care of God as we understood him. Right. Until I am willing to change and not just willing on paper. Willingness is a verb. It's not a noun. As long as I think it's a noun, I will be doomed to my own disillusionment, my own personal distraction of saying, I know this and I know that. Again, going back to the Gandhi quote, you cannot do wrong in one department of life while attempting to do right in another department. Life is one indivisible whole. That is where I need to be in alignment. So what do I do for this silver bullet? I clean house. I trust God. I work with others. I do this by being honest, open-minded, and willing. Folks, I guarantee you, and I want you to message me if this is not true in your life. If we do these things, when we do these things, to the best of our ability, day in, day out, Follow a program of recovery, regardless of what it is. Follow God as you understand God, regardless who that higher power is. And work with others, regardless of who they are. There's no pre-qualifier in helping other people. If we do these things, I guarantee you, you will never go back the way you used to live. That is our silver bullet. I base my entire recovery and the entire recovery of Will, of Buddy, of Eddie, of Scott, of Steve on that. Combined, we have 230 years of personal recovery between six people. And that's just six people I've mentioned off the top of my head. There is a silver bullet. We just have to put it in our gun as we go through this life of recovery. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please follow me on Facebook, on Twitter, on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram. DM me. Let me know what I can do each day for you who desire to live a different life. And as always, my name is Robert, and I am the Recovery Guy.